inside the stories that affect you. This is Inside Kelloland. Good evening, I'm Don Jorgensen. Thanks for joining us. You've likely heard the phrase, life can throw you a curveball from a sudden illness or injury, financial strain, or even a job loss. The unexpected can easily bring us down. But as you drift off to sleep tonight, we want to bring you a touch of positivity to help start your new week off right. Tonight, we're going to look back at some of our recent most uplifting stories in hopes of bringing you a little inspiration. But first, your mindset can also play a role in how you handle the unexpected. And join us today to give us a little more of the mental insight is Malia Holbeck from Avera Outpatient Behavioral Health Services. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Well, different times of the year certainly can present different challenges for all of us. And right now, with so much cold and snow, some of us probably are getting a touch of cabin fever or even seasonal depression. My question is, how do we go about handling or managing that? You're right. So this, for some people, this gets to be a very challenging time of the year because they do start experiencing some symptoms of depression. So what that can look like for a lot of people is they, they start withdrawing from friends and family and start isolating more or, or hibernating in their, in their homes. <clears throat> they might start experiencing that they have a lack of energy. Um, they start losing interest in, the, in things that they enjoy doing. Um, there's some other things as they might um, have, a, have a loss of appetite or might even start overeating as well. Can that be dangerous in any capacity? It can. Um, you know, for when we kind of look at when people have seasonal depression, we really try to determine is, um, is this something that is continuing to happen or are the symptoms relieving? So for some people, the symptoms actually tend to get worse where it does start to impact their daily lives too. So if it gets to the point where people are sleeping too much that they can't get out of bed, that might impact their jobs. Um, some people, that depression starts to get worse where they might even have suicidal thoughts um, or different things like that too. So this can be something that can progress if, if symptoms don't start relieving within a short amount of time. And what can, you, what can a person do if they feel like they're experiencing some of these? So one thing to be mindful is if, you, if you're someone that experiences depression already is you might be um, at higher risk to um, developing more symptoms of depression or that seasonal depression during this time of the year. Um, and if you've experienced seasonal depression before, um, you might be someone that is probably gonna experience some symptoms again the following year. So with that in mind, there's some things that you can do kind of more on the preventative side. Um, so kind of getting out there and kind of having a plan of just being staying engaged in, in doing things that you enjoy doing. Um, also physical exercise can also be something that can really be very beneficial for people too. So even um, 20 minutes of light exercise really can boost our mood as well. So making sure that you're staying out and um, spending time with friends and families, um, playing with your kids or even with our pets too can really kind of help uh, keep our moods elevated. And I always say this because we do live in the Midwest and we know that winter's coming and winter's here. We might as well embrace it and try to find, find some of those activities outdoors and do some fun activities yeah. outdoors. And that's a great um, suggestion too. So we, I think within our community and with South Dakota there, we have some great options of things that we can do outside too. So, you know, we might have to kind of put it aside that we're gonna get cold for a little bit, but just bundle up a little bit more and maybe try some of those activities that we haven't done before. Um, or maybe get involved with some groups or some clubs or different activities that, that we haven't tried and see if it's something that you enjoy enjoy doing. Yeah, maybe do some hiking, do some, join the curling club or uh, go do some ice fishing or something like that. Yeah, huh? you bet. Um, what about having a positive attitude every day when you wake up? How do you go about having a positive attitude and can it help? So I think that is something that can be really helpful too. So I think just kind of our perspective and in our attitude on, on different things can be really helpful. So I always like to give the analogy is, you know, if we're gonna go into playing a basketball game to a team that is maybe just a little bit better, better than ourselves, um, and we go in thinking that we're not gonna win because this team is a little bit better than us, we're probably not gonna win that game. But if we go into that game thinking, you know what, you know, we, we are a really good team and we, we can win this, the chances are pretty likely that we could probably win that game. So we can pull those same concepts over with just kind of our, our, over, our, 
our, our moods too with if we if we plan to have a good day chances are really likely that we're going to have a good day oh quickly now de demands from our home life or our jobs it can create a lot of stress farmers in particular is one profession right now under a lot of stress any advice for our farmers so we really recognize that our farmers, like you said, have a lot of stress too. We want to be able to help those farmers that are in need. So one thing about that's unique about farmers and some of our other professions across our communities too is they're a lot more rural. So our rural communities have a, a, have a challenge with being able to get access to services that they need to. So one thing that Avera is doing is we have a farmer's hotline where they're able to, to make a call and be able to meet with, with our team that's gonna ask some, some questions about what's going on. We'll collect that information, what's gonna give us a good idea or a better understanding of what's going on and with the severity of what's going on with that individual and be able to provide them some recommendations on what's gonna be most helpful for that individual. Okay, Malia Holbeck, thank you so much for being on Inside Kettle Thank you. What started out as a friendship between two women turned into a life-saving event for another person. Oh, it's also bonding two families together for life. Next, when Inside Kettle Land returns. Welcome back to Inside Kettle Land. Just saying hi to someone can lead to friendship, and as you're about to see, why it can also lead to saving someone's life. It wasn't too long ago that Kara Hoyne started working at a Sioux Falls restaurant. As the newbie, she felt a little out of place, but eventually she found friendship with a co-worker. Tonight, Kelloland's Brady Mallory shows you how that bond led to an act of kindness that someone is carrying with them wherever he goes. Hmm. You see the pretty clothes? <laughs> no. In a hospital waiting room, not many people are in a hurry to give someone else the time of day. These three share something in common. We'll get to that later. First, meet Kara Hoynes and Katie Erdahl. Working together at this Sioux Falls restaurant turned out to be the recipe these two needed to become best friends. <laughs> they even talk about each other the same way. One of the people that just really always stood out was Katie. Um, she's just, she's very kind. She's the nicest person in the whole wide world. Kindness is a vital organ that keeps a friendship alive. And that's why Hoynes was there when Erdahl needed her the most. Well, I knew that her brother was ill. You know? Erdahl's brother, Eric Knutson, is the third person in this room. I kind of felt off for a while. Doctors checked him out and diagnosed this father of three with kidney disease. By the time we, you know, got to dialysis and everything, uh, I was feeling pretty, pretty bad, throwing up a lot, no energy, and my blood was so toxic, I kind of went into uh, renal failure. It didn't look good. There was a, uh, there was about a week where I kind of had my pity party and I was down and out and pretty upset. And then uh, I just decided, not me. His sister stepped up to donate a kidney and doctors told Erdahl she could be a match. She wasn't. I kept getting told your kidneys are perfect, like fingers crossed, fingers crossed, and it just came down to my blood and his blood fought, which siblings do. <laughs> Hoynes supported her friend and gave Erdahl a shoulder to cry on. And then she gave Knutson her kidney. My sister Katie called me and she was bawling. And... I bawled for a couple hours, um, just so happy that somebody was willing to donate and that my brother's life was going to be safe. Avera surgeons performed the transplant about a month ago, and Hoynes and Knutson spent a lot of time bonding in the hospital. Knutson has a scar from his incision, but says Hoynes left an even stronger mark on him. I know there's one person in particular that's going to get a lot of thank yous. Eh, just in case he wasn't clear the first time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Knutson reminds Hoynes every chance he gets. Guess what? Thank you. You know, Carrot gave us hope again. I mean, I believe there's more good in this world than there is bad. And people help each other. And if there was someone, um, or if someone close to me needed help, needed a kidney or something else, and I couldn't help them, I just, I would hope that somebody else would. In this hospital waiting room, you'll find three people who share something in common. I definitely feel like the families just sort of adopted me. 
she's, she's never going to get rid of me or my family now. I have a best friend for life. My brother has a best friend for life. She's invited to Thanksgiving, <laughs> so she's part of our family. Not just because of a donated kidney. This type of bond only happens when you give someone a piece I mean, of your I'm, heart. I'm so grateful for <laughs> what you've done for me and my family that I, I don't think I'll ever be able to repay you. But I'm going to try. And you're a freaking rock star, superhero. Thank you. With Eye on Kelloway, I'm Brady Mallory. Knudsen and Hoyne still can't lift a lot, but say that they are recovering nicely from both of their surgeries. Doctors at Avera say that there is a big need for more donors who can give people in need of transplants the gift of life. To find out how you can become one, we've listed that on a link at Kelloland.com. Up next, we're going to introduce you to a 92-year-old who is still making time for others through volunteering. And then we're going to show you how Mayor Paul Tenhaken and his family are volunteering their time to help families in need. Welcome back to Inside Kettle Land. Tonight, we are bringing you some of our recent positive stories to help start your week off right. Volunteering is just one way that you can increase your endorphins. And as Kettle Land's Kelly Volk shows you, it's an activity that doesn't have an age limit. Like Bob Sanborn spends a fair share of time at the hospital, but you won't find the 92-year-old in a bed receiving care. Oh, okay. okay. You'll find him walking the halls, escorting people to wherever they need to go. So it can be quite a trip sometime. Mm -hmm. He also delivers plenty of flowers, but the most fun part of his volunteer work walking people to the door after they've healed or had a baby. Why is that the best part? I don't know, maybe it's, you're just kind of closing the door on it. It was successful, <laughs> the trip here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sanborn has more than 11 years of volunteering under his belt. His inspiration for getting started, being hospitalized himself a few years before that. And an old friend escorted me around, and when I got healed, I thought, I love to do that. Mm -hmm. Sanborn is Avera's oldest volunteer right now, but some as young as 16 are getting involved. Right now, the health system has about 900 active volunteers across Sioux Falls. Each one adds something unique. One of the great things about the volunteers, they have a lot of different skill sets. So whether their backgrounds, what they can offer to an area. Some may want to be more in customer service areas and some may want to just do more clerical and administrative things. Sanborn calls the volunteers he works with inspirational. <laughs> you only have to spend a few minutes around them to know their friends. I work with a wonderful bunch of fellow volunteers. Makes it a pleasure to come up here. But it's not just his fellow volunteers who keep him coming back multiple times each week. Something to look forward to. I think, who will I meet today? Many times an old friend. And uh, in any case, meeting new people is always good, I think. Mm -hmm. In fact, he calls the work a lifesaver and something that has helped him stay active. How long are you going to do this? As long as the joints will allow me, I will do it, yes. Mm -hmm. But for right now... This is a good organization. I'm proud to be a part of it, however small that part is. That part might be bigger than he thinks. With Eye on Kelloland, I'm Kelly Volk. Laura says that Avera is always in need of more volunteers. In fact, the health system is looking to bring in on 50 to 70 volunteers for its Avera on the Louise Health Campus, which is slated to open in the fall. But you don't have to go to a hospital to volunteer your time. There are various ways that you can show support in your community. One relatively new program in Sioux Falls helps parents who are struggling to take care of their children. Kettle Lands' Casey Waterberg introduces you to Safe Families and explains how the Sioux Falls mayor is getting involved. Okay, is it mine? Yeah. Uh. 
With three children, two pets, and the role of mayor of Sioux Falls, Paul Tenhagen and his wife Jill are busy to say the least in this game of life. And you never feel ready. Sometimes yeah. you just gotta just jump, it's like, all right, we're just gonna do it. This couple is also volunteering their time. It's a little bit hypocritical to say, Sioux Falls, we need you to help without stepping up yourself. The Ten Hakens are a host family through a program called Safe Families. Families like the Ten Hakens take in children whose parents are in crisis. What we like about this program is it's before kids get into the system the foster care system and they're separated from their family. This is still a way that a parent can say, listen, I need a break, I need help. I don't want to put my kid in the system yet, but I need someone to help out. Yeah, and as a mom, you know how hard it is uh, and you might just need that, that reprieve. Safe Families is a faith-based program that launched in Sioux Falls five years ago. Everyone's a volunteer with Safe Families. The host family's a volunteer and the family that's getting the help is voluntarily placing their children in a host family's home. Tracy Folkerts is the Sioux Falls coordinator so of the program. Them she says them. most hostings last 45 days or less, but a family can take care of a child for up to a year. We deal with a variety of crises. It could be homelessness, um, inpatient, drug or alcohol treatment, short-term incarcerations, or even emergency hospitalizations. Children can vary in age from newborns to 18 years old. Over the past five years, the program has helped 250 kids in the Sioux Falls area. Our main goal is to keep families together. So we're helping families where abuse or neglect are not currently present, and so they don't need their children to go into the foster care system during their crisis. They just need a neighbor to step up. Ooh, ten. These neighbors specialize in babies who already have a host family, but that host family needs a break. At first I thought I had to change all the diapers and that, so I was first bump and then they told me I didn't have to do that, so I was happy. <laughs> all jokes aside, the Ten Hakens say they're seriously thankful for this experience and hope it inspires others to get involved. You don't need to be perfect, and whether you think you're a perfect mom or a perfect dad and you have this perfect family, that that's not, that's first of all, not reality, and second of all, um, you can have your faults and still be a safe place for someone in need. We don't need to rely on the government or government programs to help a brother and sister in need. There's a role we can all play, and I think we feel called to help, just like I'd like to see all the citizens of this community help someone else who has a need. Because sometimes life ends up handing you cards you never expected. With Eye on Kettleband, I'm Casey Wannenberg. To find out more information about safe families, including how to get involved, we posted a link under the story at kettleland.com. A local radio program is offering up more than just music. It also has a message of hope. Up next, how the Beacon is able to reach listeners on many levels. Welcome back. When you're flipping through radio stations, there's one program catching listeners off guard. The Beacon is a weekly radio program playing contemporary and country music with a special message mixed in. Kelloland Sammy Bielin introduces you to the man behind the mic and explain why this is much more than listening to tunes for him and his listeners. Lovely, the band. Hi, I'm Austin Harris. You're listening to The Beacon. And today on The Beacon, we're going to talk about encouragement. To inspire the usual radio support, banter about the weather or latest trend is not on the docket for the Beacon host, Austin Vanderzee. Instead, the goal of this program is a higher music. calling. We wanted to have a program that could be on secular radio, but would weave a spiritual message without being preachy and have a different message than what you hear from the pulpit. I'm about to fill your day with a whole new enthusiasm for life. We're going to talk about... Vanderzee and his business partner, Jeff Okerlin, started The Beacon back in 1999. They took the idea to Results Radio in Sioux Falls. It's a good fit for what we're doing, both musically and, uh, you know, the, the message we're trying to convey, uh, you know, on the station, too. 
With nearly two decades on the air now, their message of hope is growing. The Beacon is broadcast to 65 radio stations in about 25 states, but the reach doesn't stop in the U.S. Here's Hawaii, and one of our affiliates that's really loyal is in the Mariana Islands, Saipan, and uh, they love the Beacon. There are two different programs Vanderzee produces and records every week one for country music and another for adult contemporary. I make sure that I go through every lyric. I've had to pull some songs. In fact, about half my country songs don't make the cut because it's a little too risque uh, compared to what I want for the Beacon audience. Against the wind, Sprinkled in the middle of music from Blake Shelton or Maroon 5 are messages designed to touch people's lives. One step at a time. I mean, we've aired this thing now for over 20 years and throughout that time period, I can't begin to tell you how many people have you know, reached out to us and said, hey, you know, this show has really you know, made an impact in my life. You know, people think it's all exciting to see that the suicide rate went down. Well, if it's still 40,000 people a year, somebody's trying to tell you they don't have much hope in this world. So the beacon is trying to say, come here, listen, this is not about religion. This is about a relationship. I think this appeals to a wide variety of listeners. So many listeners have that opportunity to hear those important messages. This is the beacon. Julie Iverson has been tuning into the beacon for about 15 years now. She says the ability to listen to a variety of music while still being inspired is why she keeps coming back. You'll make it. To think the first time, uh, I, I was just struck by the inspiration and the words of encouragement and faith and overcoming fear. And I think many people in the world need to hear that. You're listening. Even though Vanderzee does the work of several people, he says he's not making a profit, and that's okay. He's more interested in delivering a message to change lives. It's not just standing up behind a pulpit and bringing a message that everybody has heard, but also getting out there, touching people's lives and mixing it up with the people that you meet every day and uh, sharing your faith. It's, there's nothing new about any of this. It's what do you believe in? And if you truly believe in it, are you willing to share it with others to give them hope? It's radio that goes beyond just playing some great music. It's radio that Now, all of the Beacon broadcasts are available to listen to on their website. And they're also working on developing an app. You can find out more about today's topics online at Kelloland.com. Just click on the Inside Kelloland section. And be sure to join us every Sunday following the 10 o'clock news right here on Kello TV. We leave you tonight with the new colors of the winter cold captured by photojournalist Mike Simonson.